I have some helpful advice for progressives. I know you hate American history, but what you should do is set aside for a little while your copy of the 1619 Project and read a standard history of the American Revolution because there are lessons to be learned in there for you. If you read and study the American Revolution, and I have, I've had to teach it for decades, one of the things you realize is while the Americans had a lot of problems with several British policies, and these were real issues for Americans, much of the way the Americans put these things together was essentially a conspiracy theory. You can take all the individual British policies, Proclamation of 1763, uh, Sugar Act, Stamp Tax, towns and duties, you know, stationing troops in uh, American colonial towns and cities like Boston, Quebec Act of 1774. You take all these things, the Tea Act, can't forget the Tea Act. You look at all these things individually, and you can, you can, if you look from a British perspective, which you can today, looking at British records, all these were part of a coherent, relatively consistent British policy that actually made sense. But in the American mind, all these things, because the Americans didn't have access to the inner thinkings of the British Empire, they didn't have a voice. They weren't participants. They were outsiders. They had their lobbyists, Franklin and others. But they really didn't understand what was going on. So to them, these individual actions, which were linked in reality, were turned into this conspiracy theory in which the British policies weren't designed to address other issues, they were designed to strip Americans of their, their rights as Englishmen and to move them toward not physical slavery, but political slavery. It was a conspiracy theory. And that's, to a great extent, what led the Americans to revolt in 1775, 1776. Now, I can't go through all the examples in a YouTube video. I mean, I would spend you know, half a semester trying to explain this. But just take one act, the Tea Act. Now, at the time, the American perception was the British, you know, we weren't, we were boycotting British goods, including tea. And we were buying basically smuggled Dutch tea, which was cheaper. And of course, we weren't paying British external taxes that they had levied on tea. And then the British suddenly start shifting in tea directly from India via the East India Company, which was a normal procedure, at a lower price than the smuggled Dutch tea. So for the, in the American mind, this was some vast conspiracy to use us, to trick us by offering us lower priced tea to get us to accept the principle of paying external taxes to the British. This was a conspiracy. And that led to the Boston Tea Party, the response to which from the King and Parliament was the Boston Port Act, which basically shut down Boston. The appointment of a general as governor of Massachusetts, martial law, which then set off a whole chain of consequences which led up to the American Revolution all based on a conspiracy theory. We know now that that's not what the British were doing. The East India Company was going bankrupt. So the idea of allowing the tea to go directly from India to the, United, to the American colonies without passing through London, where they would have to pay additional taxes, was a way to prop up the East India Company financially, lest it go bankrupt, which would force the British Parliament to bail it out. That was it. But in the American mind, because we didn't know that, we didn't understand the imperial thinking about why they wanted troops in American cities rather than Canadian or uh, Caribbean cities, 
which made perfect sense from a British point of view, or why the British did any number of things. Because they were never explained to us, we didn't understand what was going on, we found explanations of our own, which became conspiracy theories. And these conspiracy theories, as I've said, helped drive the colonies into open revolt against the British. Now, the British, there were two ways they could have addressed these developments in the American colonies. A modern state, aware of things like public relations, would have said, oh my God, T, T Act, the optics are bad. Let's explain what we're doing. But they never did any of those things. They were too self absorbed to believe that they needed to explain to these lowly American colonists why British imperial policy took the shape that it did. After all, this is the 18th century. These are the days of you know, secret treaties, and you just don't open your books to people. So what was the British response? If it wasn't to explain what the proclamation of 1763 was about or what the Quebec Act was about or what they were trying to do with you know, putting troops in American cities, instead of explaining that to us, what they did when they were confronted with this dissent, including these conspiracy theories, their response was to shut down dissent. You think we're up to something no good? Well, we'll prevent this pamphlet from being printed. You think we're conspiring to deprive you of your rights? We'll shut down this newspaper. You think we're up to no good? We'll prevent you from assembling. The British responses to the Americans, all, it, all they did was to cement in the American minds their conspiracy theories. We must be right. If our conspiracy theory was a theory and not reality, they wouldn't be trying to suppress it. Basically, British political actions to suppress dissent in the colonies convinced the colonists that they were right. Suppressing dissent meant there must be something they were covering up, something they were afraid of, something we had stumbled across. Yeah, I know my theory of what the British are up to looks harebrained, but the fact that they shut down my pamphlet, confiscated it, destroyed my little printing press, tells me I must have hit the truth. Why else would they do that? If I'm wrong, why don't they just explain why I'm wrong? Any remember, anybody remember the election of 2000? Gore Bush? Florida? Hanging chads? What was the response of Florida and the Bush administration to that after the Supreme Court case? What did they do with the Florida voting records? Go back and look, November 2021, New York Times. New York Times got in there and they were allowed access to all the ballots, machines and everything. And they did their own recount. And what did they conclude? They concluded the Florida system had a lot of problems. But they also concluded if the Supreme Court hadn't stepped in, Gorby Bush had not intervened, and the Democrats had gotten their way, and there had been a recount under the terms that the Democrats had asked for, Bush would have won. That, that was what the New York Times found. Now, there were conspiracy theories at the time that, you know, Bush and Florida, you know, his brother, he would get connections, and this was all some sort of conspiracy theory. That was answered by the New York Times a year later. Now, there are similar questions today about, take Georgia counties in and around Atlanta. You think a year from now, the Wall Street Journal is going to be, get, get in, be able to get into the voting records in Georgia of the entire state, even those counties around Atlanta, and do their own recount to see what happened? No, that's not going to be done because you can't do it. The machines have been purged. The guts have been purged. Ballots have been shredded. The mail-in ballots, in many cases, you can't even do what happened after the 2000 election. You can't do it in 2020. It's, so it's a conspiracy theory that will never be addressed. 
in the way the conspiracy theory of 2000 was. When you shut people down on YouTube or Facebook or Twitter for raising questions about the election, you're doing the same thing the British did in the colonies when they were questioned, when people raised Conspir real conspiracy theories. They really were conspiracy theories. But a conspiracy theory that's squashed as opposed to explained away is a conspiracy theory that in many people's minds gets legitimized. And that's what's happening today on social media. That's what's happening today in the media. That's what's happening in our politics. The left confronted with what in their view is, and in some ways they're right, conspiracy theories. Instead of being addressed and explained away, instead of saying, go, go ahead, look at all the votes in Georgia. Look at all that went on in Pennsylvania. Look at all these things. Instead, their response is close the press, shut down the pamphleteering, threaten the people, we're going to arrest them and ship them to Britain for trial. That's the ticket. And we know what happened. We know what happened. There was a revolution in this country. One of the lessons of the American Revolution is that the worst way to combat a widely held conspiracy theory is by stifling dissent, by stifling free speech, by stifling a free press, by stifling freedom of assembly. When you do those things, you don't squash the theory, you legitimize it. You may make people even more likely to believe it, and even those who already to believe it, to believe it more wholeheartedly. If these things weren't true, if the British weren't trying to throttle us, why are they doing these things? And the same situation is being repeated today. And the left's making the same mistake that George III and Parliament made over 200 years ago. And the result was armed rebellion, a revolt by, as I often quote John Shy, great military historian, a people numerous and armed. It's a mistake the British made, and it's being made again by the people who, within a week, are going to be administering and running bizarro America. God save us all. That's my take. Have a comment, leave it. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification button so you know when I post new videos. Share the video with your friends. And until the next time, keep fighting.